I almost feel like we shouldn't say anything after that amazing play. I agree. And and drama, but um, I think I think we do. Okay. Um, so thank you for a, a really very dramatic, uh, highly emotional, but also intellectual and uh, educational afternoon, uh, as well as the morning. And um, i like to start with what I had asked our speakers this morning. Uh, similar question, but I think we will just um, kind of condense it to one. So start with one reword, and then imagine your future. Uh, dream your future with that word and, and share with us. So we can uh, do that with Liu Yichun and then just come go down uh, the order and then Lyndon will ask his next question. Okay, I thought it would be three words. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I've one saw you. Or, one or three. I have saw you show in the WeChat, give us uh, three words. Zai go, zai di, zai xian. So I don't know how to speak English, maybe reconstruction, mm -hmm. relocation, yes. re-presentation. Very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, maybe another word is regeneration of all our works. Yeah. When we speak uh, uh, generating, I mean that's the future. I mean uh, if it grows from the land, we can see the future. Okay, and Joe? Yeah. One or three words? Yeah, I presented a lot of Li today. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the most important is Li knowledge is uh, important for me. So it's like relearn. Great. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> um, I think I already, we talked yesterday, and, and um, I think it's also such an interesting moment to reconnect. You know? and, uh, and Mark Lee uh, talked about that, uh, the, the, the idea of collaboration, and I think the, uh, and, uh, this was always an important part, as I mentioned, in our work, and, and uh, you know, in this inspirative, inspirational um, day, uh, and meeting you all, I think I'm very happy to, to look forward to uh, a long time of collaborative work, and um, also like re-meeting and rethinking uh, um, like new opportunities. You know? So I think that's uh, it's, it's a good point, you know, looking back and the starting point with something new. Wonderful. And the, the word, I mean, I'm not putting the word in your mouth, but because all day I've been posting each speaker and I force myself, not force, but I uh, find inspiring rewords in your presentation and I, and I post them in WeChat. And now I'm looking at you and listening to what, or remembering what just happened and the word that comes up to me again and again about your work is remember. <laughs> um, but I will give, uh, I will give you, Time to tell us what your reword is. Uh, it's not nice. Remember, uh, I was thinking redrawing because we like to draw. You no, know, what without have, erasing, what others have done, and our drawings to so have the chance to redraw them again. Also, I like read reading, reading a book that I like, reading some years later again. It's very beautiful, and revisiting, revisiting think cities like Shanghai. I would love to revisit it. Well, um, I was, it's very obvious to say reuse, but um, yeah, it's the one that comes again and again, because I think, uh, in my opinion, um, is a moment to think, in, if, it's, if possible, in stop demolition and reuse everything what we inherit with all its possibilities. There are so much built that we can uh, use again. That is... Um, yeah, for me, it's a very, very obvious, an obvious choice. For, also, I think for, for the future generations, it's more clear than perhaps for, the, for us, for the older ones, I, I'm sure. 
But I right. think it's interesting to that the, uh, the reuse can be both looking back and looking into the yeah. future. Mm -hmm. no? yeah. I think that's really important that um, you also think about the reuse of the future. Mm. I mean, if we think about circular economy, I think this has to be. Uh, yes, and I think it's even more relevant today, even more relevant, relevant than <laughs> today. Then it's I'm going crazy with all the re in my in, in my head. Um, so. So, so, so I was going to plan to ask a different kind of question uh, from this morning, but um, I decided after all your presentation that I'm actually going to ask the same question. Uh, and and uh, I think Joe and Liu Yitsun, it's already translated, so you guys already know this question. Uh, it's probably you guys are ahead than these guys, uh, but it deals with pentimenti and palimpsest, right? So this was this morning question, um, which is, perhaps even more relevant with, uh, with this set of speakers this afternoon, especially regarding your perception on ruins. I talked about Russian scholar Svetlana Boim. She once quoted that perhaps there's a different logic of the ruin, which is not romantic, not Baroque, not melancholic, but a form of toleration of disharmony, a toleration of plural modernities which, which, uh, in which we live. Um, perhaps um, can you guys tell us today, I already see it in the work, but if you were to verbally describe it to a new client today, what your attitude is with ruins. Okay. The ruins means, I, I think uh, Ricardo and Leva's presentation gave a very good uh, title, uh, Emotional heritage, yeah. For me, uh, the ruin gives rise to a sense of freedom, and it's what, where the energy of nature consumes. It is also a, a rote metaphor that transcends cultures. When a building returns to nature, a neutral structure emerges and the meaning suspended. This makes me realize that the latent structure scapes is always present in buildings and that is why we could find a way to continue our work uh, with ruins. This uh, gradually becomes something that I would like to explore at the very beginning of the design. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, thank you. Joe? Yeah. Honestly, I heard the question before but still difficult for me. You can answer in Japanese. Yeah, but, uh, if you can answer yeah, in Japanese, I'm ready. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I try to speak English. If you look at the ruins as a, an ex uncontrollable space, you can see them as diverse spaces. Individuality sometimes reject people, but the diverse space accept the different things. That's why ruins gives me people a sense of possibility. Yeah, ruins makes me uh, unexpected imaginations. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I would like to pick on that, pick up on that. You know, we always love the word and the idea of ruins, also because we. Um, we see our work never as the beginning or nor at the end. It's, it's always like part of a chain and which we, it's like a ball which is rolling and we roll it for a certain moment of time and then someone else continues. And I think that's what you say, you know, that the, like the possibility and to transform and to rethink um, is, is something which I see as extremely interesting potential. In opposition, of course, to this very European idea of landmark, you know? Mm. Um, I think there we have to rethink some things because otherwise, you know, we, we start to become in a kind of a little land museum. Uh, and I think in Switzerland we have this tendency. So um, we are very much pushing into, without destroying, but the palimpsest to, uh, you know, to, to bring it to, to life. Uh. Um, I just want to chime in on that. You, you spoke about the European um, and the European concept, or actually the English word for ruin came from falling stone. 
And I think the European concept of ruin are buildings uh, that have, where the stones have fallen, maybe halfway, otherwise it would be empty. But because it's halfway fallen and you see the stones, um, like in Rome, maybe like in parts of Venice, um, that is the Western sense of ruin. But in fact, in, at least in Chinese art history, uh, that concept doesn't really exist. And it's more about emptiness, which is something that I myself recently have been really fascinated by, that our history, Chinese art history, doesn't really have this idea of falling stone, but except it's about decay of trees, decay of nature, and empty rubbles where there's no building at all, and that's the ruin, and people still go pay homage to those ruins, which I think is kind of fascinating, not to set the world against East and West, that's not something we want to do, um, but it's interesting as a comparative analysis to, to think about that. Yeah, that's interesting, because I was thinking also one of the fascination of a, a ruin, sometimes that it's a fragment, so, so it's not, a, a maybe there is an emptiness, or what we say, it's open. And, but also the fragment has a lot of uh, a, a attraction no? for, I think, for us. No? Sometimes. And <clears throat> sometimes I think also because our, our has something to do with our way of uh, thinking. You know, that, uh, I don't know, when we think, I think it's more um, by fragments or it's difficult to think of an entity, a complete entity. So a ruin has this uh, fragmentation that I think it helps to, to, to go around it to try to understand it, because it's incomplete. You know? So uh, I think this is very nice, because the way we think also sometimes is incomplete. You know? It's a suggestion. To, you know. Is that why you like to represent your, it seems like your rep architectural representation very often, even in the building themselves, are um, collages, and collaging different fragments together to make a new whole. Yes, and we, we like the unfinished ness of the drawings that they trying to keep it open you never know no sometimes after a few months working the client uh, has something great to explain you and you want it you want the project to be able to accept it uh, in a certain degree mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes and i was thinking when when simon was talking about this um how to, yeah how to deal with the ruin in the sense of not uh, well to make it useful again i think uh, which is i think what we call the, the right to inherit in the sense that you use the ruin as uh, you, you are respected and you, are, and you embrace the, the emotion and the con as a container of time, which is it. But then you need to update it or to bring life again on it. And that's, I think, the crucial thing, the crucial moment when you will act on it and still you want to keep it, uh, this, fra this fragile beauty that, is, uh, that it has. Uh, which is very, is very um, delicate and is very easy to erase. So I think the, um, the, diff, the challenge or but the, the fascinating of working with these pieces, fragments, is how to touch them so that it looks like you, you haven't touched them when it finishes. Yeah, but still you manage to have a very artistic personal expression adding to the existing without becoming a concurrence or a competition. No? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the, the really interesting part of, of your work. No? And I think that's where we, I think, um, have this kind of European um, idea of landmark, could, I think I'm very happy to bring it to Switzerland and to discuss this, because I think that that's exactly what we need. No? Yeah, but also I, I think that's the reason why I brought the word pentimenti, mm -hmm. right? The layers. Uh, pentimenti is used with painters when they do layers and layers uh, of painting and in the process of perfection oftentimes they're afraid to show what is behind the painting um, and yet I think it's okay pentimenti also means a sense of forgiveness mm -hmm. forgiving other, other artists but also forgiving yourself right that perhaps it's okay to have this disharmony it's okay not to be perfect in the process of our exper experimentation and exploration. Otherwise, you know, we're, we're always constantly, the creative field is always constantly pressured to have that perfect proportion as Per Le Corbusier's uh, definition 
or what Louis Kahn talks about, right? Everything is so perfect that we end up as a generation don't practice architecture because we're so fearful uh, of exposing the layers behind us. Uh, so I think it's important uh, in this particular moment of our generation at Festival, 20, Festival of Design 2023 that we tell people it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to forgive oneself. And it's, for, it's okay, and please forgive all of us if we're not perfect. 